Hey there, so today we have another review. This is a beer from a lion. Oh, I'm sorry, the brewery is actually, I think it's actually uh, called C well, Lion Brewery, but they call it Ceylon. And so, this is a really cool one. Uh, if you don't know what this is, this is a tropical stout. Uh, I post uh, a link to it above, but um, talking about like you know the basis of the style. But uh, quick and dirty is that it is similar to Imperial Stout, Baltic Porter, Foreign Extra Stout, which Guinness makes. And it's generally produced out of a um, tropical climate. So we're talking about something like um, uh, Jamaica uh, has one. And then this one's actually out of Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka, if you don't know, is a tiny uh, island country outside of India. And this was dumb. Shit. First off, this was like a house favorite for a while. Um, I've, I've been actually uh, introduced this beer like early on in my, sorry, my first job in, in uh, uh, retail um, going on almost a decade ago. And then, uh, this is this beer. Jeez, what am I doing? Anyway, finally it's back. I saw it on the market. By the way, this is a four pack. Well, I should have bought the four pack. It's such a good price. Four pack of 500 mil cans. So we're so we're talking like uh, four times like 17 ounces. So it's like, like uh, it's like 70 ounces of beer. Okay, 8.8% stout for $12. That is dumb cheap. By the way, I don't know if there's anything on the market that will get you drunk for a better price. Well, no, no, malt liquors, I guess, maybe, and vodka, blah, blah, blah. But for craft beer, they, they ain't better pricing than that, at least for, you know, bang for your buck, ABV to, you know, Jesus. That is dumb pricing, right? I guess the Voodoo and Imperial Ranger is really dumb. That thing is like a 9.5% Imperial IPA for like $14 for a six-pack. It's like dumb cheap, but anyway. This is a classic, classic. Lion style. Let's see this guy. Beer is dark, dark. Let's see. Let's see the color again. Let's pour it out. Yeah, that's really dark. Jeez. Um, beer is like in the light. It has like, like murky brown, dark brown color. But in, in the light, it's obviously just pitch black. This thing is black, black. Like I don't can't even see anything on the edges. Um, has a really wonderful kind of like a medium tan head to it. It's a nice looking beer. I mean, that's very dark, yeah. Yeah, uh, on the aroma, you get uh, really nice kind of like licorice-y, uh, dark flavors, um, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, a little bit of like um, cocoa powder, a little bit of uh, espresso bean, chocolate-covered espresso bean. I also get this nice kind of like, yeah, now it's now it's like um, chocolate cake. It's a little bit more decadent, a little bit more sweet, a little bit more vanilla in kind of chocolate. A little bit burnt and ashy. Um, a little bit of just like burnt toast kind of thing. Really nice, like complex nose, like all, all the way from the mocha to the espresso to the ground co uh, coffee grounds um, to the dark chocolate to the chocolate cake thing. A lot of going on, cheers. I do have a little chill too. I, ch I chilled it actually a little bit more, which is weird because like I review beer sometimes for you guys that are like, you know, whatever. Anyway, a little bit too chilled, but it's going to warm up really nicely. Uh, this is objectively a tasty beer. 8.8. .8, it is delicious. Super drinkable. Um, up front, you get a really nice kind of char ashy thing, um, but not all the way like American beers can tend to do. Um, American beers can tend to sort of, I mean, some people call clashing, but they can be a little bit acrid bitter on top with a really uh, like forward kind of like American hopping to it, which has this like piney citrusy tone to it, right? So you're like throwing on bitterness with kind of a dark chocolate espresso, uh, bitter, bitter acrid flavors. Um, here it's a little bit more restrained, but it's still pretty like ashy and burnt, but doesn't have that like insane hoppiness that the American beers do. So it doesn't, it already sort of tells you it's not an American style, an American Imperial style. Mm, up front. It's like it's got a lot of malt to it, so you get a lot of whoppers, um, a lot of milk chocolate going on in there, um, a little bit of like um, um, a bitter kind of like coffee grounds in there as well. So you get a nice complexity. It's not all sweet and decadent. You also get a little bit of like acrid and ashy and bitter. Uh, again, coffee ground kind of thing going on. Um, the beer has a nice supple mouthfeel, uh, 8.8, .8, like drinkable but like not burning but right like that that really beautiful place where it's like you know i like my imperial stouts at like 10.5 yeah probably 10.5 percent just standard american imperial stout this one actually drinks above its abv i would guess this you know it's pretty much nine nine percent this drinks at 10 pretty much right 
Mm-hmm. This drinks at 10%. Um, there's a little bit of like a dried cherry, dried prune fruitiness in here. Um, again, medium plus mouthfeel, lingering chocolatey flavors. Uh, reminds you a little bit of, um, sorry, oh, what's a great example of that beer? Um, the Alchemist, in my opinion, makes some great IPAs, but also makes some of the best Imperial Stouts out there. And they have an English Imperial Stout and an American Imperial Stout. I believe it's called Beelzebub. I believe it's called Beelzebub, but whatever, you guys know. It's the English one. The English one is definitely not as, like, again, the American uh, Imperial Stouts are going to be clash, a little bit clashy, but, you know, some people call it balance, where there's high bitterness, high hoppiness, high, bitter, um, high burnt flavors, right? So you're just amping up everything all the way. The English example is a little bit more mild, um, pulls back a little bit on that roastiness, and then definitely very restrained on bitterness. So, you know, uh, that kind of like more decadent, creamy, um, s- nuance kind of take on a big boast, uh, boastful beer that's, you know, over 7 8% roasty beer. Um, you can throw a little bit of nuance in there by pulling back on the roastiness and, the, and definitely the hot bitterness. This does that. That's a good example. That's that's one of my favorite beers of all the time. Um, the Imperial Stouts that uh, the Alchemist makes and um, this sort of replicates that kind of English. Um, I guess he was going for English um, Stout, Imperial Stout. It sort of tastes like Tropical Stout, right? And this is what Tropical Stout is like. It's it's, it's big, roasty, um, but not all the way overboard. Um, has a nice richness to it, but without the hoppiness of an Imperial Stout. Um, doesn't have the, 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 the ashiness that foreign extra stout does, right? Guinness foreign extra is very, very, very ashy. Even though it's not that happy, hoppy of a beer. Um, yeah, very like burnt tire, rubber, almost smoky. Here you don't get that. So you get sort of the best of all kinds of worlds here with, with, with drinkability, um, uh, the boldness of this beer, complexity of the dark uh, profile of the, again, the milk chocolate, dark chocolate, the chocolate cake, a little bit of dark fruit, a little bit of that kind of uh, sp- uh, ground coffee bean thing and espresso. Um, yeah. This beer is just a classic. Um, a little bit of fermentation flavor in there, right? I'm going to call this a little bit of kind of like this red apple, ethyl acetate kind of thingy, but maybe going, oh, oh, what is that? Ethyl hexanoate, right? A little bit of apple tone in here, cooked apple. Um, a little bit of fruitiness, like light fruitiness. Um, this beer is objectively just delicious. Uh, one of the cool things I did when I moved down here was actually um, hang out with a few beer geeks that now, you know, brewer, brewer, breweries, own brewery, blah, blah, blah. But also um, one of the first advanced Cicerones actually out there, uh, he, who's a home brewer and owns a home brew shop. And it was really fun, you know, sitting next to him and we would do these geeky things every week and just like try to burn through the BJCP and just taste as many commercial styles as possible. And when you do that, by the way, and you really have a discerning palate, you know, you know, now I'm an advanced system, but I was a certified system, right? When you have a discerning palate and try to pick through beers that like, you know, again, what I do with the channel, you find like the commercial examples, like there are some not very tasty beers out there. There are a lot of beers that we, you know, we would just walk out of a tasting and just be like, wow, we did not enjoy ourselves today, you know? You generally think that, like, oh, yeah, everybody bought, like, two, uh, brought, like, a couple bottles of a bunch of commercial styles, and we're going to have a great time drinking beer. No, we were tasting, and it, it, a lot of it was not enjoyable. <laughs> a lot of beers that we did not want to drink and not want to finish. It's just objectively just not great beers. And, just, you know, they're classic commercial examples, and people love them, blah, 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 blah. But at least for me, I didn't like a lot of those beers. One exception. This beer is freaking tasty. Uh, we had this up against, you know, some of the other crazy um commercial styles you know like a, a foreign extra stout and baltic porter and i think imperial stout and you know a bunch of other things this beer stands out it is tasty i should just went with a four pack like what's the point this is just a world-class tasty beer i mean um again balance where it's like not only hoppy uh really nice kind of rich characteristics to it um does this job for like where it sits on abv um uh, accessible cheap i mean like it's hard again this is a huge can you get four of them for 12 bucks so um i love this beer i'm gonna give it a solid (sighs) it's not all the bells and whistles but sometimes you don't need the bells and whistles on dark beer right you don't need the barrel aging you don't need the high hoppiness you don't need an american pearl stout they're just dark beers out there that are objectively really my opinion of objective objectives 
I objectively think this is really tasty. Uh, and there's certainly dark beers that, in, in my opinion, don't taste good. A great example would be something like the Samuel Smith Patty Porter, which I think is absolutely trash because it tastes like actual trash. Like there's an ester in there that is absolutely gross. Um, 96. 96, Lion Stout. Uh, oh, actually, let's go higher. 97, 97, that is Lion Stout. Just a beer that I've been enjoying for like almost a decade now. It's absolutely freaking fantastic. It is ideally accessible to you, cheap. Comes from freaking Sri Lanka. What a story on this guy. Um, I think we, we yeah, we actually had, you used to have the rep coming to the store. They, like, they, they, they get their ingredients from like Southeast Asia or something. And then the, the, the brewery is like, like 3,000 feet elevation in this tiny island outside of India. And they're making this big, you know, almost 9% tropical stat. This beer makes no sense. Why it even comes to the States. Why it's even produced. How much they brew out of it. I don't know where the biggest market for this stuff is, even is. Um, this beer makes no sense, but it is a world-class beer. 97. Uh, it, 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 run to the store. Get some. Run to the store. 97. Cheers. <laughs>